going awesome, swimmingly well. I am so excited to bring you um, and the Palo Finale, <laughs> you know, how things kind of went with the Kat Von D Needy to look a remix this year because I have to, I'm just, I feel so excited um, about what's to come um, for how I evolve my style through my makeup collection and, and incorporate more color in the future. Um, I was not able to finish the palette because it expired on me. So um, if you are interested in kind of seeing the progression, kind of the pace I set for myself of using eyeshadow, I'm going to go on and do a transition video at the end with pictures of how I progressed um, from January through um, the beginning of December because I did had to st I did have to stop wearing the palette because um, I suffered from an eye infection and then I was really noticing a lot of deterioration in my shadows and so I made that tough decision to just go on and stop rather than risk um, further infection to my eyes so Without further ado, I learned a lot. So let me show you kind of where I ended up with the palette. It's not gonna look much different from my November update because like I said, I, I quit using the palette about that time because um, over Thanksgiving, I had a really, really uh, irritated um, ordeal with my eyes. I was not able to wear makeup and I just decided good riddance. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not gonna risk it to myself. However, that being said, I really feel this was a great change of pace for me. In the past, I have chosen to pan neutral palettes. Those are great options if you are jumping into this challenge for the first time or you are hesitant to um, step into taking on a palette because it does require a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of persistence because there are days things to get tough. In fact, if this is your very first pan that palette, um, this is my sixth sixth palette I think to get through so I'll go on and link the video up in the card above about five lessons I've learned from Pan That Palette perhaps some of those tips will be helpful to you because no matter what palette you have chosen to um, commit to for the year um, it will present its own challenges and, and they're very different from palette to palette so um, hopefully that will, will offer you some uh, tips when you get stuck in those ruts because I mean you can get stuck in ruts with something as colorful as this I I kind of had my ebbs and flows um, Throughout the year, but the one thing I will take away from this palette. I've, I've learned how to embrace color It's something that I want to continue wearing in the future In fact like this red go-to look um, was a look that I fell in love with wearing rewind um, the matte espresso brown that was up here called Vox um, I also loved using Molder and Skulls, which were very shimmery um, highlighting shades, and then going through with a shade like Analog. I, I continue to wear oranges in my crease color to just kind of blend everything out, and so I'm very thankful for the experience of wearing this palette to really show me different things about how I can continue to evolve my style and really just embrace wearing different kinds of makeup outside of those basic neutral palettes, you know what I mean? So the other thing that I really learned about myself this year has been when I wear really bright, intense colors, I like a matte formula. So that has kind of steered me for a panning project that I'm going to be jumping into along with Pan That Palette for 2019. So I hope you'll be on the lookout for that video because that is coming. So um, I'm not going to stop incorporating color. I definitely don't want to go back to just using... Um, a basic neutral palette. If I do, I'm going to constantly be bringing in singles from here on out because it's just, it's so fun and exciting and it really gets that creativity going, especially when you really embrace color theory. And, you know, looking at a palette like this, even though I had my setbacks with it occasionally here and there, I feel inspired every time I see a layout like this. So as the year has closed and we're now moving on into 2019 I'm gonna go on and get rid of the palette so that I don't have all these expired shadows kind of sitting around anymore but I'm gonna go on and keep the outside packaging because like I said whenever I'm feeling kind of stuck I like and appreciate looking at the back of this color wheel to just kind of jog my memory to be like oh yeah I remember loving um, uh, the matte yellow and the plum and a teal together or a green to kind of give me a little bit of a subculture vibe. I came up with a lot of different looks that I was really thrilled to wear on an everyday basis. So at the end of this video, I will put a link to the playlist of different looks that I came up with. I talked about ways that I shot my stash. Um, if I needed to start incorporating other colors from my collection. So if you don't have this palette, 
There are lots of alternatives in those videos if you're wanting to incorporate some more color in your collection um, because some of the looks I really focused around were the purples up here because I ended up really falling in love with some um, various combinations like I loved mixing the it was a really bright lavender shade up here called Muse I loved mixing it with a shimmery white to just give me a beautiful like I don't want to say like uh not angelic, but it was kind of like it was a highlight and it had like that duochrome effect. It was like zingy, you know, outside the comfort zone kind of thing, but it was still neutral enough that I could wear it on a daily basis. I loved, loved wearing that every day. The neutral wheel was actually quite easy to use. I was able to multitask Vox, which was that matte espresso brown um, in my brows. I loved wearing it as a liner. Um, I finally got to a point, the Starbucks look that I loved. I'll go on and link that. Um, that was probably one of my very, very favorites. That was when I started embracing really wearing espresso brown kind of in my outer corner. Um, and, and that's something that I've really just loved from then on. It helped me get through black metal over here, which was like one of the most intense black shadows I think I've ever used in my makeup wearing life. So it, it took a long time to get through that shadow, but it was well worth the process. So my favorite look from this palette actually ended up being with the shade Rewind along with Analog. Um, I went through with Noble, which was kind of the warm, uh, kind of like Max Soft Brown is a good interpretation. Or if you have Lorac shadows, I'm thinking like Light Taupe um, from the Pro 2 palette, or if you're using the Anastasia palette, um, Subculture, uh, what is that light brown on the top row? I know you know what I'm talking about, but very similar to that kind of vein where it's not too cool, but it's not too warm. It's like that perfect Goldilocks shade for your crease. I really enjoyed wearing that in combination with quite a few of the looks. I also enjoyed mixing Misfit and Vinyl together as a lid shade when I did that Starbucks look in particular. I would put that all over the lid and then I would run Noble in my crease and then have that espresso brown in my outer corner and then I would go through and highlight with the shade Molder. I loved, loved, loved that look. It was very easy, appropriate for um, cooler weather. It was something zingy and fun, but it looked like it had a lot of depth, a lot of dimension. I got tons of compliments on that look. I also went through and I had kind of a subculture vibe that I really loved panning, so I will link that video in that playlist at the end of this video where I went through with Fran all over my lid and then I would pop in, um, uh, Noble in my crease again, and then I would go through with, um, was it Anthem? I believe it was Anthem in my crease, and then I popped Lemmy on my lower lash line. Loved that as well. One of my favorites. I also fell in love using a shade. Um, I mixed Swoon and Destroyer together. Um, I ended up using Swoon mixed in with other things as blush, and so that really helped me to get through that shadow. Um, I'm trying to think what was... What was Legend? Hmm. Oh, Legend was that bright shimmery gold. That was another one that I had a lot of fun wearing that on the lid. I did kind of a, a look that was reminiscent to a look I loved painting when I uh, went through the Lorac Pro palette where I mixed a mauve in my crease. I put Legend all over the lid and then I went through with like a pewtery shade in my outer, uh, in my crease. And then I would go through and like deepen it up with black metal in my outer corner. And then I would go through and I would use that um, Muse and, uh, where is it? Skulls combo of the, like the ethereal glow highlight that I was talking about. All those colors, it's been so long now since I panned those pretty early in the year that it'll make a lot more sense when you, um, want to check out those videos at your, at your leisure. And then, um, you know, you can go through and, and I do talk about a lot of dupes. Um, one of the other colors that I was a little bit, um, surprise that I would love as much was dark wave dark wave over here I loved wearing it on my lower lash line in particular with this kind of ready orange look um because it really offset the red shadow of rewind it made my eyes really pop it gave me an intensity to my lower lash line without making my eyeshadow the focus of my look like you noticed my eye color first I got tons of compliments on that look in fact that's going to be a lesson that I kind of take away um, for this year with the shadows that I'm going to be panning is, is bringing more blue onto my lower lash line. So, you know, all those palettes that we hear about last year that were released with like the pop of blue, that's why these companies are doing it because it is one of the easiest ways that you can zhuzh up a neutral everyday look and give yourself some color without being like 
overwhelmed with the amount of colorful eyeshadows. So overall, I am ecstatic at what I was able to um, just embrace and learn about this palette. The shades that I found the most challenging to use were definitely Synth. Um, it was not one of my favorites. It, it was one, if I didn't have the shadows expire, I would have definitely figured something out. Um, I, I think I would have appreciated it more as like a spring summer shade because it is such an intense blue. I tried a couple of things with it. Like I tried to make a colorful mascara with it. Um, I tried making Franken shadows with some other shades, but it, it had gotten to the point where it was just too old and those Franken shadows just didn't hold up. So I really didn't use a ton of that shade to be quite honest. Um, but in terms of the rest of the palette, learning how to embrace yellow eyeshadow was a big kind of stumbling block for me this year of, of one I had to figure out and that's where I realized okay I like matte shadows if I'm going to go bright um and then do kind of more all matte looks and maybe do some shimmer on my lower lash line like when I would use Lemmy um versus having like really shimmery colorful eyeshadow all over the lid because with my hooded eyes it can be um a little bit overwhelming but with the mattes and the brights it was something that I could find flattering enough but still give me that like added effect of wow you know you really make that hot pink look appropriate for work or you know make that bright purple and yellow look appropriate to go take the kids to school in the morning and not and not feel like my makeup was just a little too avant-garde um walking in so like i said i'm going to take that lesson away as i go into my next palette and that being said let's go on and just Let's just go on and introduce Pan That Palette 2019 right now, shall we? I'm kind of taking a little bit of a different route because um, I do have a couple of palettes in my collection that I've hit substantial pan on and I just want to move out packaging because I, I finally feel like I've gotten to a place of, I've been panning for several years now and I'm getting to a point where my collection is not, not overwhelming to me anymore. Like I, I don't feel um, odd about purchasing makeup here and there. And, and so what I'm going to be doing this year is really moving out shadows that I've already hit pan on. So in terms of 2019, my pan that palette is going to be what is left of my Lorac Pro 2. And let me give you a starting point to where I am, because as you can see, I've hit substantial pan, but have no fear. I'm still going to be doing get ready with me's. And I have come up with alternative shades from other palettes in my collection that are quite similar to all of the missing pans in this palette. And so I have also created a secondary pan of, or palette of complementary shades when I finish a lot. So if you look between the two palettes, I can basically put the Lorac Pro 2 together again because this top shade up here came out of my Too Faced Semi Sweet palette. Um, it's quite similar to buff. I also picked out a matte white down here under this green that is quite similar to snow. Um, I've got a shade that's similar to light brown since I finished that today. Uh, coming from another palette that I'm going to be doing for a Fantastic Ladies project. So be on the lookout for that because I, I do make it my goal this year that I'm going to be panning a lot of eyeshadow out of my collection. I'm really, really excited to see what I can do. Um, then since I have tons of pan going on with um, Nectar, I chose this uh, kind of peachy looking shade. Um, from one of my Too Faced palettes. I've also picked out um, this olive green came from the Kat Von D Saint and Center palette. I actually like it better than what used to be Jade. And so um, I, I figured that will give me a, a great alternative because I love wearing olive greens and it's just an easy kind of go-to on a daily basis. I also chose MAC Satin Taupe right here to fill in because I have finished Chrome. I finished that in a project pan earlier this year. And then another shade that I was looking for, beige. I, I picked this MAC shadow up here. Let me see if I can, there's a magnet on the back of it. So I don't remember exactly what color it is. It's not quite the beige shade that is in the Lorac Pro 2 palette, but I figured since a lot of times gold bit. Um, it's a little bit more gold than beige was, but still kind of a similar tone. I figured this would be kind of fun to wear on the lid. If I wanted a little bit more of an intense highlight, that's kind of like what gold bit looks like. I don't know if the camera's going to do this justice right now, but 
they perform quite similarly so I figured why not and then I also brought in this is the shade that I've kind of been wearing lately um, I don't remember which Lorac palette it came out of but I, I went on like a major depotting kick where I purchased two of the um, Adept Cosmetics dual-sided palettes. I was inspired after watching one of Georgia Harris's video and I was able to consolidate so much eyeshadow. It was insane. And so now I'm going to be kind of treating my eyeshadows like a lot of singles and that's how I'm going to be getting through them in the next couple of um, months, uh, maybe the next, you know, year or two of really being able to make substantial changes to my collection. So like I said, oh, and I also chose, um, this is the licorice shade for the matte black um, that I used up out of my Lorac Pro 2. This came out of Too Faced Semi Sweet palettes. So I feel like I'm going to be able to make a ton of progress and like continue hashtag Project Pan Porn through multiple other palettes in my collection while still being able to accomplish my goal of moving out packaging, staying consistent with Project Pan. Um, I will still be offering Get Ready With Me's. Um, like I said, that's why I wanted to put these two palettes together so that way I can continue um, making videos of looks that work for me. Perhaps they'll work for you. And like I said, you know, after the Kat Von D palette, I definitely want to continue incorporating a lot of colors. So be on the lookout. I'm going to be participating in a Project Pan with the Fantastic Ladies called um, my or, um, Four Single Ladies and My Main Mats. Um, Project Pan, I think, is the uh, proper name for it. I think it's for single ladies and my main mat. We picked a bunch of matte shadows or a matte palette out of our collection and then four singles that we kind of want to get through and I have a lot of ideas of what I want to do. So that's one of the huge reasons that I wanted to go with the Lorac Pro 2 because I have such substantial pans. So this is my starting point. I'm also going to be working on, you know, doing what I can with this palette, but I do intend um, to finish what's left out of here and then keep moving through more and more of my collection. So thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your time and thank you for jumping in to paint that palette once again. I am just, it, it blows me away. Um, just the excitement and um, the just persistence and hard work. I love watching your videos of, of you putting in your commitments to your palettes and you're moving out eyeshadow and learning so much about yourself. It just, it thrills me to no end. And the fact that this challenge is really taking a launch um, now a couple years in is just so exciting. So I wish you all the best and, and that you're going to have fun. Um, if you've never taken on this challenge before, it is so worth it. Like I said, I've been doing this year after year after year now and every year. It doesn't matter if I pick a neutral palette after a neutral palette. I learn something new every single time because every palette has its own challenge and presents its own learning curve and it's just it's thrilling to see how my preferences change throughout the year, how my style changes throughout the year, how it reflects what's going on in the rest of the makeup community for that year. So I highly encourage you to try this out for yourself. It, you won't regret a single minute. And even if you start the challenge and realize you want to jump around your makeup collection and try different things, that's part of the process of, of learning what you want for your holy grail. I have to admit, like... Um, when I started Pan That Palette years ago, back in the Naked Palette days, oh my gosh, it seems like an eternity ago. Um, but, um, you know, I had I had my initial, like, I didn't know what I was doing, and I, I didn't have any expectations, and, and I was just kind of like, it was a very different experience from what I feel like now, of being able to really look at my collection and see dupes for what they are, and, and be able to mix in different things and feel like I really get a lot of versatility. So that's part of the learning curve and, and I know that you're going to get to that point too. So keep up that hard work, keep up that persistence. And when you have a hard day, just accept it as a hard day. You know, tomorrow's going to be better and you're going to be um, re-motivated and reinvigorated once you get through that wall. So the walls are what make us learn. So like I said, I wish you all the best. Have fun, take care, and I look forward to catching up with you real soon. See you later.